Shalom everyone. We have uh, worship and praise the Lord together. Uh, now is the time for us to receive the word of God. Um, before we receive his word, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Let's quieten our mind and our hearts together and come to the Lord today. Father God, we come to you today. Lord, we need you. You are our Father. Jesus, you are our Shepherd. You're all that we need. We bring our lives to you today. Whatever needs that we have, Lord, you have the answer. You are El Shaddai, God who is more than enough. Today, right now, Lord, if anyone has any need, touch them. Bless them, provide them, heal them, restore them, Lord, renew them. Thank you, Lord. You are still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And right now, even today, wherever we are, Holy Spirit God, you can come and touch lives today. Make them know that you love them, that your love is still the same even today. And let us be filled with your love, abiding in your love, rooted and grounded in love. And with that, we can bear fruit for the glory of God. Bless your word and bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now today, the title of the word that I'm going to share is Together We Find Christ's Love. Now, togetherness is God's plan and God's design. God describes His church in the Bible as the body with many members. Each one of us has a different function in the body. And we need to join together. Uh, if, imagine if the hands are working alone, or the arms working alone, or the legs separated from the body and want to walk alone. It won't work and it would be very scary. But when the whole member of the body join together, the arm, the hand, the leg, the body, all functioning together as intended. And it's, that's a description of uh, the church of God. The body will function and can perform uh, big things, great things. And in the same way, if we all as a body of Christ are together, knitted together, joined together in the love of Christ, and we function together, then we can do great things for the kingdom of God. Uh, piles of stones, if they are just uh, dumped uh, on the ground, they become rubbles. But if the stones are arranged together, built up together, it becomes the house of God. And we are the stone that will be built together to make up the house of God. The Bible says about the church as an army of God. It's not just individual uh, soldier, but it's an army. As a family, it's not just a people who stay together in one place, but a family who care for one another, who love for one another, who uh, support one another as a family. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 until 12, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. There is a warmth, the love of God when we are together. But how can one keep warm alone? 
God doesn't want you to be alone. God wants you to stay in the family and the community of God. And though one may be overpowered, one can be defeated, two can defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Hallelujah. Two are better than one. Uh, is it really? Well, I have a friend who say, I do not want to work with that person. Because if I work with him, it will become slower. Uh, he will slow me down. Because he will ask questions, he is uh, disrupting my job and so on. So two may not be better than one if the two people don't care for each other. Or they are not balanced. Or they are uh, the two people who are seeking their own interests. And maybe one try to utilize the other for his or her own good intent, yeah, for uh, the selfish purpose. And, you know, uh, the two will not become better if they are not united in love. But when two people are together, united together with one purpose and one heart, something great can happen. Now there's a story about Jonathan and his armor bearer. You know, in the first uh, Samuel chapter 14, verse 6, yeah, at that time, Jonathan and his armor bearer with the whole Israel are facing the enemy. And then uh, Jonathan uh, went out with his uh, young man, his uh, armor bearer, and then uh, he said in uh, 1 Samuel 14, verse 6, Come, let us go over to the uh, garrison of the enemy. It may be that the Lord will work with us, will work for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. Basically, Jonathan said, if God with us, whether we are many or we are few, doesn't matter, because God will overcome will defeat our enemies. And then his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you, heart and soul. Praise the Lord. His armor bearer basically, I'll go with you all the way, life or death. I will work with you. I will fight with you. Hallelujah. And with this kind of unity, two are better than one. Because two, uh, they will have a good return for their labor. If either one of them fall, then the other one can help them up. Praise the Lord. God wants us to be together. And as we are together, God wants us to find the love of Christ. God wants us to experience His love. And God wants us to find Him. And as we find uh, Christ and abide in His love, and we, He in us and we in Him, then we will bear much fruit for the glory of God. Now, how can we find Christ's love in our togetherness? Yeah. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, the word of God says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, in the name of Jesus, there am I among them. Where two or three gather together in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord, and we are coming together to worship the Lord together, you know, God's presence is there. And when God is there, His love is there. And He can fill you with His love. He can touch you with His love. He can fill your life with His presence. And the Bible talks about worshipping together. Sometimes we can worship the Lord alone. We can sing to the Lord alone. We can praise the Lord alone. We can pray to the Lord alone. But something happens when we come together as a family as a congregation in the corporate worship. 
Psalm chapter 34 verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David says, it's great for me to praise the Lord, but I want you also to praise the Lord with me. I want you also to exalt God with me and let us together exalt his name together. Shall we do it now? Oh Lord, we praise you. We bless your name. We exalt your name, oh God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there is a power when we praise the Lord, and especially if not alone, and together with our family, together with Church of Christ, together praising, exalting his name, and God is enthroned upon our praises. Praise the Lord. Psalm chapter 35, verse 18, David says, I will thank you in front of the great assembly. I will praise you before all the people. We can sing to the Lord alone, individually, but it will be an uplifting environment and atmosphere when we see, when we gather together and worship the Lord together. And sometimes, you know, we are inspired when we see other people worshiping the Lord. I see uh, worship and praise the Lord earlier. We see the worship leader, we see the singers, we see the musician uh, praising the Lord. And we can be inspired by the joy in praising the Lord and how they worship God deeply and how the intercessor praying fervently. And that is like a fire that you know, uh, spread across the uh, dry woods. And that kind of enthusiasm and that kind of passion will infect us and will make us, uh, you know, bring us to pray more, to worship more, to praise more. And there's a difference when we are praising the Lord alone and when we are together. Hallelujah. So today, are you alone or are you together? Uh, look for a friend, look for a, a companion that can come. Let's exalt the name of the Lord together. Let's magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Yesterday, we had our call uh, and we worshiped the Lord together via Zoom. Okay, We have Zoom meeting, uh, virtual meeting, and we worship the Lord together. We praise together. And... You know, normally when we say that two or three gather together in, uh, in God's name, it's, it's a physical meeting. And that's always great to have physical meeting. Yeah, when the church is back uh, to have a, a physical gathering, let's come back together. But while we are still separated right now with social distancing, with this COVID-19 situation, we still can be together even though it's virtual, right? And yesterday when we worship the Lord together, we can feel the presence of God. We can feel the touch of God. And in our place, we can feel, you know, God's presence and God's love. And also we pray fervently for a breakthrough, pray fervently for healing. And we can feel God's power even when we pray together uh, in uh, different places, but with one heart, with one uh, unity, we uh, pray and worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. You know, when we come to the Lord together, we will be refreshed, strengthened. We are renewed in God's presence. We are restored in God's presence. We are... Uh, we renew our strength, our, uh, we, we are replenished with the new strength uh, of, from God when we are in God's presence. And we can feel God's presence more when we have this uh, gathering, like in our cool or in our homogeneous group or even in our uh, online service like what we have today. That's why in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, the Bible says, Let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, 
but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. If you feel dry today, maybe you want to find a community, friends, right, family, you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that you can say, come, let's worship together, let's pray together, let's pray for one another, let's encourage one another, and you will feel the touch of God and the love of God. Father, I pray, Lord, let no one be alone. If anyone is dry, Lord, let somebody come and touch their life and, and, and encourage the person, Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody can be strong and experience Christ's love that is beyond all understanding. So number one, in corporate worship, when we are together, praising and worship the Lord, we can feel the presence of God. And number two is when we are loving and serving one another. In the Bible, right, there are many scriptures talking about one another. Pray for one another. Encourage one another. Carry each other burden. Hallelujah. Serve one another. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, God is in heaven and God is spirit. And he cannot be seen. Yeah. Um, when we feel the presence of God, we can feel the touch of God. Yeah. But more often than not, God wants to work through his children, through his disciples. And Jesus command, commanded his disciples that we should love one another that we should love for one another, not just as how we feel like it. Now, today, I want to love at this much. The next day, I am not in a good mood. I have a difficulty and so on. So I love less. No, Jesus said, you should love one another as I have loved you. And as we receive the great love of God, yeah, uh, the overwhelming is a, a f flood love of God, then we can love other people. If you are dry, if you don't have enough love, how can we love other people? We need to be filled with God's love. But as we receive God's love and we walk in His love, then we reflect His love by loving other people, loving your brother and sisters. And we love others even to the extent as Jesus did love his disciples, love you and me. He said, no greater love than this, that a man should give his life for a friend. We receive love from others in a community. In our togetherness, we receive the love from others, we receive cares from other people, we receive uh, uh, encouragement from other people, we receive comfort from other people. And as we grow, not only we receive, but we also want to give. As we become mature, we want to give because we know that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And then we want to care for other people we want to carry other uh, people's burden. We want to encourage other people. And with that, we experience God's love. We experience God's love we, as we are encouraged by other people, as if God speaks to us, but He speaks to us through another person. We receive comfort from other people as if God comforts us, but is through our brothers and sisters. And with the same way, we want to bless other people. We want to uh, accompany those who are uh, lonely. We want to comfort those uh, who are in sorrow uh, because of discouragement or disappointment and so on. And as we do that, that's why two are better than one. Because when you are fall, when you fall, somebody can lift you up. If you are weak, somebody can strengthen you. And at the same time, when you are strong, you can carry other people's burden. God wants you, God wants us to experience His love 
through our togetherness in the body of Christ, from your brothers and sisters in Christ the Lord, Christ Jesus. Now experience love from one another. And that's why find the community where it suits you, whether it's a community of love, cool, cell group, or it's a homogeneous group, and so on. Don't be alone, because through this togetherness, we can feel, uh, we can experience God's love uh, that is uh, channeled through other people to us. And we also can become the channel of God's love to other people. And with that, we can find and experience Christ's love. So number one, we experience or we find Christ's love in corporate worship when we are together worshiping the Lord. And number two, when we love one another, when we serve one another, when we care for one another, when we comfort one another, we can experience Christ's love. And lastly, Christ's love is not only for us alone. Christ's love is reaching out to the lost, reaching out to the sinner, reaching out to those who are walking towards destruction, who are walking in the kingdom of darkness. And we want to bring light to them. We want to bring good news to them. We want to bring God's love for them, that they will experience God's love as we have experience. You know, the heart of Jesus is always for the lost. He say as a shepherd leaving the 99 sheep and look for the one sheep that is lost. At his agony upon the cross, you know, the, there's a criminal next to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied him, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. That man maybe has a broken life all you know, his life such that he deserve, you know, crucifixion punishment. Maybe his life is really bad. But Jesus loves him. And when he comes to the Lord and he asks God, Jesus, remember me when you come to your kingdom. Jesus, out of his love, save him. And he say, today you will be with me in paradise. If we have God's love in our hearts, we will have compassion for the lost. And as we experience the love of God in our togetherness in the body of Christ, we also want to extend that love to the world around us. God wants us to go out together as one army of Christ to defeat the kingdom of darkness and bring the kingdom of God to come and the will of God to be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, you may go out alone and try to reach out somebody, but maybe it's better if you have somebody, someone else accompanying with you. It's like Paul, when he went out with Barnabas, he went, uh, after that he went out with Silas and Barnabas went out with John Mark. They knew that going out together is better than doing it alone. Like Jesus sending his disciple two by two. And God wants us to work together as one body. You know, uh, maybe one person has a gift of uh, uh, leading. Another one, another one has a gift of exhortation. Another one has a gift of serving. Another one may have a gift of caring. And then together, they serve one person that need Jesus and that person can find Jesus because this group of people have with the love of God bring the good news, bring the love of God 
and share the love of Christ to this person. You remember the four person that bring the paralytics to Jesus. Let's do it together. Let's bring the love of God together to those who need the Lord, to those who are lost. And as we share the love of Christ, we will receive more of his love and we will experience more. And it's always amazing to see someone receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior and born again and get saved. It's always the greatest miracle. And perhaps we can do more when we are doing this work together with our brothers and sisters. Now, I want to share a testimony. Uh, one of our cool members uh, was having a difficult situation uh, early in this year or maybe last year. Uh, things didn't work out for her and she had a heartbreaking situation. And she was withdrawing herself from the cool. We tried to invite her uh, but she didn't feel like coming uh, to the fellowship. And uh, this is what she wrote. You know, I was already in a cool, but at the time I didn't feel like going to cool meetings. After rejecting lots of cool meeting invitation, one day I decided to come. And then everyone in the cool, in the cell group meeting, prayed for me. And I felt I got some strength back after that meeting. After the time, I really experienced how this word of God is truly happening to me. He, she quoted from Psalm 40 verse 2. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walk along. Wow. She felt like she's being lifted up out of the pit of despair, out of mud, out of mire. And then she can carry on uh, saying that the cool friends keep praying for me. Even until now, we pray for each other. And I'm grateful to God to let me have them in my life. Glory to God that he does not let my foot slip that he watches over me, does not slumber nor sleep. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Isn't it great testimony? I actually asked her to share in a short video clip, but she sent this in writing instead. And I would like to encourage you today. Have you found Christ's love in your life? Maybe you have, you are saved. But, you know, if you are getting dry, you should look for a community where you can join together in uh, worshiping God, praying together, praising together, giving thanks to the Lord, sharing testimony that encourage one another. And with that, you can experience God's presence and may God's presence touch your life. Uh, encourage you, bring you up, giving you new hope, uh, you know, strengthen your faith. And you can see with God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. And then when you are together, you can experience like what uh, this uh, person experienced. That she was in a despair. She was you know, in a difficult situation, and then somebody come and encourage her. Somebody come and pray for her. Somebody come and uh, invite her to come back to the family family of God. Somebody come and uh, comfort her and uh, cheer her up and accompany her, and then she is back in the family of God. If you are alone and you are weak, like the Ecclesiastes say, uh, woe is the one who fall and alone. Don't be alone today. Don't be alone and find somebody that uh, a community, a group that you can grow together. And then with that, you can experience God's love 
And with that also you can share Christ's love to the lost, those who need to hear the name of Jesus, those who need to experience God's love. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father, I pray, Lord, today that no one in the family of God, in the church of God, is alone. Lord, the world can be very challenging, very difficult for us. The devil is always prowling around, Lord. But as we are together, where two or three gather together in your name, you are there with us. And we share our life with one another, strengthen one another, encourage one another, build up one another, serve one another, pray for one another, believing for one another. Oh, it's like the uh, Jonathan R. Uh, and his armor bearer together and they do great things. Father, I pray, Lord, unite each and every one of us to the body of Christ as a member to the body, as a stone to the uh, a building, as a family member to the family of God. And in that we find Christ's love and we are uh, growing together we come to uh, bear fruit for your glory. Bless everyone today. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. This Sunday is a Holy Communion Sunday. So you can prepare the bread and wine or grape juice uh, at your home that we can uh, partake in this Holy Communion together. Uh, representing our fellowship with the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. You can prepare now. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Let's uh, come to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your body and your blood, Lord, represented in the, uh, or symbolized in the uh, bread and wine that we are going to partake. Lord, we want to come to you in a worthy manner. Cleanse our life. Forgive our sins, Lord. Let me come to you worthy and partake in this holy communion with you. Bless everyone who partake today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now let's take the bread on our right hand. The Word of God says, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, uh, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, it's not the bread that we break, is a participation, is a fellowship with the body of Christ. Amen. Let's eat it together in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your body is broken because of our transgressions and by your stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Let's take the cup uh, on our right hand. And in the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Um, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes again. Hallelujah. Let's give thanks to the Lord for the cup, for this uh, cup that represents the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the blood of Christ cleanses us from all our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. 
The blood of Christ protects us, and by His blood, we overcome the enemy of our soul. Brothers and sisters, in the Lord is not the cup of thanksgiving upon which we give thanks. It's a symbol of our fellowship. It's a participation in the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's drink it together in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just put down the cup and let's give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your sacrifice upon the cross. Oh, thank you for redeeming us, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the love you give to me for this day you've made your amazing grace Lord I lift my praise thank you Jesus thank you Lord for the love you give to me for this day you've made your amazing grace Lord I lift my praise for this day you've made for this day you've made your amazing grace Lord I lift my praise Hallelujah Bless your people o Lord Bless everyone Every man, every woman, young and old, bless every family, protect them, Lord, by the blood of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen.